Hey everyone, welcome back to Adobe Live. Thank you all so much for joining me today. My name is Cody. I am going to be your host for the next hour. And this is Power Prompts. If you've never been to Power Prompts, basically this show is all about empowering you to power through your art block. So we start off each week, each Monday, um, with a new drawing prompt to get you guys, your guys' creative juices flowing. Um, basically every month we will have a theme surrounding that month and then we will have um a different prompt every month um for that theme hey everyone welcome how are you guys doing it is so good to see you all today um basically also you guys um if you haven't heard if you weren't here for our last episode um this month's prompt theme is medieval march um so last week we did um a dragon prompt and this week we are doing a knight um, and I, I actually am wanting to show you guys um, my artwork, my finished artwork from last week. I ended up doing a bit of an animation for it, which was really cool, um, which was suggested by somebody in the chat um, because I wanted to use the animation tools for Fresco and uh, I hadn't really used them yet. And uh, so I gave them a little bit of a tryout for this dragon and I animated the fire um, and it turned out pretty cool. So. Fun fact, today we are actually going to be working with the animation tools to animate some little uh, accessories on the night. So I hope you all enjoy this stream today and I hope you all are having a wonderful day as well. Hey, Kiss, Create, Kiss My Creative, welcome. I've seen you in some other streams. Good to see you here. Thank you so much for joining. Gareth, RB, Umicorn, Steve, uh, Sam, welcome, welcome. Thank you all so much. Hey, Annika, Christelle, hi, hi, hi. All right, let's hop over to, I'm going to show you guys my artwork first. So here is my, wrong way, this is my <laughs> dragon uh, that I did. Um, so I gave the smoke a little bit of a, um, like a kind of flickering effect. And then I also did a little bit of like, like three frame by frame animations for the fire. It was so simple, so easy. Um, and so we are going to be doing a little bit of that today. And I can show you guys my little night now. Um, so I started on the sketch, very, very simplistic, um, little like, like roughed in animations. We're actually going to be doing the cape from scratch. I'm going to redo the sketch and do it along with you guys. And also last week I had you guys vote on not only the composition that we did, but also the color palette, the color of the dragon. And this week, I want you guys to vote on the uh, accent color for the night. So either red, blue, or green, you can go ahead and throw them in the chat. And um, I will pick the most voted color. And the color will most likely be like the color of his cape and the flag and his little his little pomp on his, um, his helmet. Um, and I'll probably also like accent that with um, some like silver um, armor as well as maybe like a gold accent just so to give you guys an idea of like the direction that I'm headed. So yeah, we'll wait for those little um, those little those little votes to come in. And I also wanted to let you guys know if you want to participate in power prompts, feel free to do so. You can upload your work with hashtag Adobe Live uh, Power Prompts to Instagram. Um, and we have quite a few entries total now. We have like 30 something entries. So we are going to be looking at some of those entries towards the end of the stream as well. I'm looking forward to showing those off. Some more dragons and also a bunch of knights as well. Um, and we also have some people working on working on uh, the future prompts too. Man, they're way ahead of me. <laughs> uh, cute knight, thank you so much, appreciate it. Why am I surprised? A bear knight, of course. Yeah, yeah, it's my go-to little, little bear characters. I was thinking about also, I might add a little bit of an animation to his ears because it kind of doesn't really make sense that his ears are like stagnant. So we might give a little bit of a sway to his ears too. Um, that'll be pretty easy as well. Green is not a creative color. Wow. Yeah, that's that's a YouTube throwback right there. <laughs> British racing green, blue. Okay, green, blue. We got a lot of votes for blue and green, I see, which is kind of surprising. I, I feel like the last time that I did this, um, most people voted for red. Hey, Axel, welcome. So cute. I love it. Thank you so much. Let's see. Let's count up the votes here really quick. We got... Uh... 
couple of blues, few few blues. We got blue, blue. I think I think I think the winner is blue, you guys. It looks like looks like blue. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? I'm gonna pause a little animation there. If you guys didn't know, by the way, if you're new to Fresco, Fresco is completely free to use. Um, you do have to have a CC subscription to be able to use Kyle Webster's brushes in the program. However, everything else is free. Um, and also if you have a CC sub, Kyle's brushes are free too. Um, and also Fresco is really great working back and forth with Photoshop and stuff. Um, oh my gosh, it, it's such a lifesaver having it being saved to the cloud and I can move back and forth from my iPad to the computer. It, it's, it's just so convenient. I, I love doing it. I actually love sketching on Fresco a lot. All right, so I have these um, layers here for my, um, my, what's that called? Cape. Um, so if you guys have never used the animation um, little tool here on Fresco, it's kind of new, um, but it's a frame by frame animation situation. So we have each individual frame here and you can also onion skin. If you've never heard that term before, onion skinning is basically when you draw one frame of an animation and then in the olden days they would put a piece of paper over it over a light box to be able to see their drawing underneath and then they would draw the next frame over top of it and so they can they can more easily see the animation and the movement between all of the pages well now basically how that works is that they just lower the opacity of the other frames so you can see what's happening um, so the the darker uh, the darker frame is the one that I'm currently selecting here. So we're kind of gonna make a little bit of an animation that obviously looks like it's blowing in the wind, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of his cape. We're gonna make a new cape, a better cape. <laughs> animation situation sounds like a good name for an Adobe Live show. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> I need to I need to keep that in in my mind here. Or pitch it to the pitch it to the team, huh? <laughs> uh Gareth says most of my sketching is done in Fresco these days, except for when I use a real pen and paper. Yeah, sketching, I don't know why. Like personally, I don't prefer to finish my my illustrations in Fresco. That's just me. I have finished quite a few illustrations in Fresco. I think I'm just faster in Photoshop, but I love sketching in Fresco. I'm just like, I don't know. It just really like works for me. <laughs> All right, you got blue dabba dee dabba die. Indeed, yes. <laughs> I think we're aging ourselves by, by talking about that song. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna throw in, let me grab my sketching color here. I usually don't use like pure black for my sketching. I kind of use like a, ooh, wrong, wrong brush. Let's grab the right brush, you guys, huh? Okay, pencil, much better. Okay, so we're going to, I kind of like use like an off gray is what I was gonna say. Um, so let's make kind of like a, a swoopy cape for our first frame here. Is that, let's see. Let's make like a swoopy cape. And for me personally, I don't really add a ton of clothing folds. Actually, I add like hardly any clothing folds at all. Um, my work is relatively flat. Um, so I'm going to be kind of working that way. And I'm also new to animation, you guys. Like I, uh, I haven't done very much animation, so I'm not gonna be adding a ton of details. It's gonna be super easy for those of you that are just getting into animation. We're just gonna be doing some squiggly lines here. So we got like a nice, a nice swoopy, swoopy. He's got a lot of volume to his cape. That's always a good thing, right? So let's make some like little swooshy lines here. And then we'll go up and back over his shoulder, where his shoulder, we're gonna draw through as well. So drawing through means that we're not stopping where it should, in the areas that it should be behind the bear. We're just gonna draw the whole entire shape and then later we, we later on we can go ahead and erase it. But for right now, so we can see the whole shape of the cape, we are going to just draw the whole thing. Hey, Odari, welcome to the stream. How are you guys doing? Good to see you. <laughs> hello, hello. Hey, Bliss. 
Good to see you. Thank you so much for joining. That cape thick. Yes, indeed. We like a good thick cape on, in these parts. Yes. All right. So now that we have our first frame, we're going to go just down here at the bottom. We're going to do the plus. So now we have a second frame. So now you can see that the first frame, it lowered an opacity. And now we have highlighted the number two frames. So now we can change it up a little bit. So I'm going to like maybe like pull it down just a tad. And I'm also going to make the squiggly line opposite for what it is, for what it was in the, in the first frame. So before I went up first, and now I'm going to go down first and then up. So now we're kind of creating like a little, a little helix shape there. Maybe flip it up a little bit more. So now it might give a little bit of an idea that it's blowing in the wind. So we can actually play these as we're creating them as well. Right now, it doesn't really look like much because there's only two frames. Minimum, I would say, if you're doing a frame by frame animation, you kind of want to at least have three, if not more. The more frames you have, the smoother it is. Um, for this flag up here, I actually had six frames. So six little individual drawings that created that movement. <laughs> All right, let's make another frame. So let's make sure that we have our second frame active. And then we'll press the plus button again. And I am just going to bring it down again. And we're just going to do that right around there on the bottom once again. And I'm actually going to flip it up a little bit more. And we're going to make another frame. And I'm also going to make one that's kind of like down, like the wind, like the wind is like, it's not very predictable, right? Sometimes there's stronger gusts than others. So it might be blowing it a little bit in a different direction too. So it's going to push it up this way. And then another one, we might, maybe we'll bring it back out like this. Something like that. We can add some more in there. <laughs> Looks awesome. Thank you so much, Steve. Hi, welcome. We'll just keep adding these frames in. until we get a general idea of what it looks like to be blowing in the wind. Now, I'll be completely honest with you guys. I'm making this up as I go. I don't actually really know, like, like I said, like I'm kind of new to animation, just like probably a lot of you guys are too. I'm kind of just like thinking about how something might blow in the wind. You can also look up reference too. Like if you look up uh, fabric blowing in the wind, you might get kind of like, um, a little bit of an animation or illustration of fabric blowing in the wind. If you wanted to look up um, some reference that could help you get a general idea of like what um, folds look like exactly. Now it's a little bit more simplistic, like I said, because I'm not, I'm not putting clothing folds in there, but um, it still like should have a general idea of like, the wind will be blowing both ends. You always have to think about two, both ends of the cape, but also sometimes, you know, some pieces of the wind might catch up one part of the cape. I don't know. It's like I said, it's kind of unpredictable. So you can kind of just wing it as you go. <laughs> it looked great. Well, thank you. I'm glad. <laughs> Team winging it. Heck yeah. Let's add another one. Why not? And let's add another one that kind of like has the cape kind of pointed down here like this.
definitely looks more natural the more the the more frames that you add. I feel like the more I noticed when I was doing the flag, the more frames you add, the less precise you have to be with your animation shapes is kind of what I was thinking about. I mean, for me specifically, it works because I'm not necessarily going for a very realistic style. Um, let's see, whoops, redo that. And I think I'll just add maybe one more. Looks all right. All right. So let's go back to his ears. Like I said, I kind of wanted to add a little bit of an animation uh, to his ears. So I'm actually going to, I really like the shape that his ears are currently. So I think I'm just going to use this little um, brush selector tool. And I am going to grab his ears and copy paste. So if you go over to the layer, you can duplicate selection. And now it's on a separate layer. I'm going to hide that and then erase his ears on the original layer. All right. So now I have his ears on a separate layer. And I can just go ahead and add a new frame to them. So whoops. Whoops. I did not want pause. Um, so I am going to go to a second frame. Let's see here. And I'm just going to add a very slight movement. I don't want it to, I don't want his ears to be like flapping all over the place, you know, like just like a little bit of a, you know, just a tiny little bit of a push. So very slight and maybe just a little bit of a, a, an elongated look like the wind is kind of pulling it to one side. Kind of pick this guy up and kind of pull it over. And we'll do we'll do the same just a little bit more. And I'm also going to copy this frame, I think, and put it to, I'm going to copy the first frame. And then I'm going to copy the second frame and put it to the back. Oh no, did Fresco just crash? Oh my goodness, you guys. I think Fresco just decided to update on its own. One second, I'm so sorry. Okay, thanks, Fresco. What's new? Great, thank you. <laughs> Don't you know I'm streaming right now, Fresco? Oh my goodness, do not tell me that I lost my work. <laughs> okay, hold on, you guys. Hold on, hold on. One sec. Okay. I... <laughs> oh my gosh. Was that, which one was I, I have, okay. So I, now I have two, I have two files here. So I don't know which one is which. Let's see, one sec. Okay, okay, no, I, I have it, I have it, I have it. Yes, we have all of them. Okay, we have all of the frames that we just did. <sighs> Crisis averted. Whew. Okay, okay, we're good, we're good. Okay, going back to what I was originally saying, let's see. Oh yeah, okay, so it worked. So what I did here, you guys, so I made three frames. One was the stagnant frame. And then I made two frames of his ears being pushed back. And then I wanted his ears to kind of come back a little bit, kind of like they're swaying back and forth. So I took the original first frame and I put it at the end. And then the second frame, I put it after that. So it kind of like almost does like a GIF, like it kind of, or a boomerang. So it's kind of like boomeranging the frames a little bit. Actually, you know what? Funny enough, let's see. I think there is a boomerang setting. Let me loop boomerang, but does that boomerang all of them? 
Is that boomeranging all of them? I think that's I think that's doing it to all of them. So I don't want that. But you do have these options. You have either loop or boomerang if you're looking for that for your own um, animation. So now he's just got like a, a little bit of a a little bit of a wave to his ears. Ah, oh, the joys of streaming hood, indeed, indeed, bliss. Yeah, such is life as a streamer. <laughs> Wonder if it's any cool updates. You guys will have to open the program and see for yourself, wink, wink. All right, so now that we have his ears in place, I'm going to start coloring. Okay, since we voted on blue, I think I'm gonna start coloring the flag. Um, so we will have to color each frame, obviously, because if we don't color each frame, then only the first frame is gonna be colored and then the other ones will be a sketch. So let's go ahead and Let's see here. I am going to make a group in here, make a new layer, put these two layers into a group. And I am going to go frame by frame with the flag. Oh, and I also, for coloring, if you guys, um, I've never seen any of my streams before. The, the uh, coloring brush that I typically use is this crayon texture. It's called Conte Crayon. It's by Kyle Webster and you can get his brushes um, uh, for free if you have a CC sub. If you are working in Fresco, you can download his brushes just by going here, down here at the very bottom of the um, brush menu. It can, you can uh, press the plus menu and then discover new brushes and it will open your browser. Actually, will it open your browser? I don't think it'll open your browser on Fresco, but it will for Photoshop. Um, but it will allow you to like follow different brush packs. I think that's how it works. I haven't done it in a hot minute, but um, yeah, you can find all of his brushes there if you have a free, uh, a CC sub. Odari says, get rid of the conflict file, Cody. You don't want to keep it. Trust me. I know. Yeah, that is that is something that I come across. I noticed that when you're working from Fresco to Photoshop, if you try to open your file on Fresco before it's fully downloaded, like before it has the little green check mark, it will make a separate file copy. And it's like the one that's not fully updated. So it's kind of confusing sometimes. So when you guys are like working back and forth with the Creative Cloud, make sure that you don't open your files before the little check mark is there. Um, because I've done that quite a few times without even thinking. And I have so many copies of my files I need to get rid of. All right, going back to what I was referring to a second ago, we are going to start coloring each frame of the flag. All right, so let's see here. So we have each frame here. I'm actually, I think, you know what? I think, let's see, let's see if this works actually. I want to color this first frame here. Why is this? Oh, I think my brush is not, is my brush full opacity? It seems like it's a, yeah, it's a lighter blue. I don't think that it's full opacity, actually. One sec, you guys, sorry about that. Smoothing. My flow is at 100%. I'm not sure why, unless it's because my onion skinning is on, is that why? No, hmm. Well, anyway, I might be able to figure out in a minute if you guys have any idea of what it could possibly be. But I'll just go ahead and start coloring regardless. Um, and I'm going to line it up. You're under a layer. Am I? Uh, the only layer that I'm under is my little, my little vote layer. So that shouldn't be the problem. I actually have this above all of the sketch layers. So I'm not really sure what's causing it there. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to have the flag line up with these little ties that I have <clears throat> holding it onto the, um, the post here. And we're just going to kind of clean it up a little bit. And I think I'm going to have the flag also pull out away from 
um, the pole here to kind of give it a little bit uh, more dimension. And I will change that in all of the frames as well, because I actually didn't draw that in to begin with. Layer blending mode? Nope, it's on normal. And so is my brush blending mode is on normal as well. I'm not sure. The flow's at 100%. Let's see. Color? Color wheel? Nope, that's at 100% opacity. I don't know. I've never experienced this before. Blush blend, blend mode or color fill? I can't tell if it's at 100%. Yeah, it is. Hmm. And it's at blend mode. Yeah, blend mode's normal. Capacity is 100%. Flows at 100%. <laughs> I'm so sorry, you guys. I don't know what's going on with that. But it's okay. We just have we just have a lighter blue color today. That's all. It's just a lighter blue color. Okay, there we go. So now let's go ahead and color in our second frame here. Actually, funny enough, yeah, let's go ahead and get rid of that layer and then color in the second one. Might be color picker. Yeah, I thought it was, but then it's 100% on the color picker too. <laughs> now I can only say maybe it's a different color. Well, yeah, no, it's not because I highlighted this one and then this is the color that it shows. And like, okay, so like if I make a new layer, oh, what? <laughs> uh, what? I'm so confused, you guys. So I made a new layer over top of the vote layer and now it's 100% again? That's really strange. That should not be the case. Let's move these layers above the vote layer. Can anyone explain that to me? I'm very, I'm very confused. That's really weird. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Maybe it's because like the old, uh, the frames are at half opacity. Oh, is this, oh, you know what? Oh, yeah, that's what it was. It was this, this folder was at a lower opacity. The sketch was at a lower opacity. That's what it was. I didn't even realize. Okay, that was my fault. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. Now we have that nice royal blue for our royal night. Mystery solved, indeed. <laughs> And I know that it kind of takes a little bit longer, obviously, to do, to color in each individual frame than it would to do just a stagnant image, um, but it's so worth it. And also if you are um, doing flat colors like I am, you could just totally skip the sketch part. If you feel confident enough, um, you can just go straight into coloring and skip that work of doing the sketch. That's actually what I did for the fire for the dragon. I didn't even sketch that out. I just kind of like blobbed in some uh, fire shapes and kind of winged it as I went and it turned out the way it turned out. Um, so yeah, if you, if you feel like it's a little bit, um, 
it's a little bit too much work to uh, create um, the sketch beforehand. Feel free to color it in first without doing the sketch. This will be neat with the little fill in texture. I just realized actually, you know what, you guys? Um, I'm doing this wrong, sorry. <laughs> I need to make a second frame this way. So I'm gonna have to redo that frame once, one more time. There we go. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to fill this in really fast again. Um, but yeah, I really love this, this texture brush. Uh, I've been using it for a couple years now with my work. Um, and I typically use a smaller scale brush and kind of a lighter pressure to to allow that white to show through to to add that to have that crayon texture in the middle of the object rather than just around the edge. And just kind of scribble in that color really quick. Kind of like the quicker you work, the the almost nicer, ironically, it looks um, because it kind of just has like a a little a little kid scribbled look. Let's go ahead and just delete these layers so I don't get confused. And let's open up, yeah, the third one. So I'm gonna have to edit this sketch just slightly because it's not connected to our little uh, our little ties that we have on our pole here. And some of those little, these little kind of like curve shapes, I'm making some of them closer to the pole and some of them farther out to kind of add in that animation as we go to kind of looks like look like it's being pulled from the, the pole as well. Hey, Clever, welcome. Did I say hi to you already? Hi, Clever. If I haven't, good to see you. Thank you so much for joining. I want to ask uh, you guys in chat too, have any of you actually done a frame by frame animation? Uh, not just using Fresco, or if you have used Fresco's uh, animation tool, let me know too. If you have any tips and tricks, I would love to know. Cause like I said, I'm, I'm pretty new to this tool. Um, I haven't done too many frame by frames. I've actually, the majority of the frame by frames that I've done have been in the Photoshop timeline, which is pretty similar to this in a way. Um, and I love just the simplicity of the Photoshop timeline. Um, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty fun to do little frame by frames. Hey Nina, welcome to this Nina. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Thank you so much for joining. Good to see you. Uh, Gareth says, yes, uh, copy and paste frames and erase the bits you want to move. Yes, it's so true. Frame by frame uh, digital is is pretty fun. Um, uh, like for Draw This In Your Style, um, my previous Adobe Live show, I did a little bit of a frame by frame animation for the logo um, for the UI of the show. Um, that was one of my first ones I've done. Um, hey, Cornell, welcome to the street stream. How are you doing? Good to see you.
Right now we are working on um, our night prompt for Medieval March, if you guys are just popping in. And we are adding a little bit of an animation to it before uh, or earlier in the stream, we did the sketch for uh, the movement of his cape. And we also did a little bit of movement for his ears. And now I'm just kind of blocking in the flag frames really quick here so we can see what that looks like colored. And again, if you guys would like to participate, feel free to do so. You can um, upload your work on Instagram or you can put it on the Photoshop uh, Discord under the uh, Power Prompts channel. And you can upload your work to Instagram with hashtag Adobe Live Power Prompts. And we will actually be looking at some of those uh, uh, entries later in the stream as well. I'm so confused. I keep accidentally drawing the next frame on a separate layer. And I don't know how that keeps happening because I'm like highlighted on the right layer. And then, okay, let's try that again. We've gotten quite a few um, entries for night, which is a lot of fun as well. Um, some really intricate ones too. That there was also um, an artist that entered like three or four dragon illustrations, which was pretty crazy. Okay, let's go ahead and just play this and see what it looks like so far. We have the these four sketches in place or four coloring blocks in place. Four out of six. So let's go ahead and add another frame. Flag is looking good. Thanks, Sam. Um, and I also wanted to add, uh, once we get these blocked in, I wanted to add a little bit of um, some detail to them, like maybe um, some little um, like uh, like gold uh, line work, I think. I might give it a little bit of a, a line detail. Um, but first, let's just block it in. Um, I think some little line detail might make it look might make it look nice. One more. What app is that? This is Adobe Fresco. Um, they they just came out with um, this frame by frame animation tool. I think a couple, just like a couple months ago. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, if you guys didn't see, we can we can pop up my my dragon really quick. Um, I did um, th this was actually the first frame by frame that I've done in Fresco. This was the dragon that I did for our dragon prompt last week, and I just did like a three three frames for uh, some some little fire animation, and I also did a few frames to kind of make the fog uh, or the smoke flicker as well. Um, yeah, it was it was super easy, super simple. Love this tool. Okay, let's go ahead and keep filling in this last flag frame. <laughs> Let's says it's so cute, little dragon with his his hot breath. I know he he an angry boy. He a little angry boy. <laughs> And then I also I also really wanted to um, color in his cape as well since we did that 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 framing 
on stream. I wanted to show you guys what that might look like. Why is it? It's like, you know what? I think, oh, I have two copies of the first frame. That's what's getting messed up there. There we go. I think that's right. Delete that layer. And then let's go ahead and hide the flag sketches as well. <laughs> you do love bears, don't you, Cody? <laughs> yes, this is true. However, Fun fact, um, my love of bears has nothing to do with my name, Cody Bear, funny enough. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and do that again. Actually, you know what? No, I am going to first do uh, some little gold designs on the flag. I'm going to grab from my um, color palette here. So this is the color palette that I typically use in all of my work. It's kind of just... Um, uh, the texture you're painting adds a lot to the animation. Oh, thank you so much, Crystal. Um, yeah, so this color palette is kind of just like my colors that I've developed um, over over many years, um, and I just love say I love saving my swatches. I highly recommend it if you guys don't already do it. Um, it's really easy to be able to just pull from your favorite colors. I um, mean, it also helps you create uh, combos of. Um, colors that you might not have thought of even within your minimal palette. Like, um, so I'm going to grab, um, let's see, let's see a gold color that is gonna show up on this blue. That looks great. Okay. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be brave and I'm just gonna go ahead and do it right on this one layer. We're gonna go single layer, you guys, no mess ups. <laughs> I'm gonna turn up smoothing a bit so to get rid of some of my hand jitter, smoothing is one of my best friends. It's one of my favorite tools. If you guys deal with hand jitter and you want to try to make smooth lines, highly recommend smoothing on Photoshop and Fresco. So I am going to do just a little bit of a little, like a little outline on all of these frames. It did it again. Oh my gosh. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. It's probably, it's probably definitely me. Yeah. I think I, I think I'm not highlighting the layer again before I go to paint. So it's making a separate layer on top of it. So when you do this, if you're going to add something to an already created frame, make sure you highlight the frame again. Um, otherwise, unless I'm accidentally like doing a hand gesture that I'm not aware of, that's okay. The more you do it, the more practice you get, right? The smooth, buttery lines. That is just what we want. <laughs> oh, and also, if you guys are wondering, um, I am working on an iPad Pro, and it's the 11 inch, and I also am using a um, Gen 2 Apple Pencil. Okay. 
Oh, I just realized I'm missing a frame. Wow, okay, let's try that again. <laughs> That's all right. Let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that looks great. Okay, let's add in that last frame that we seem to be missing. That might be why we're having a weird, um... there we go. Let's add that in here. Last frame. Yeah, I think that I think it, it was looping wrong, and I think it's because we're missing this um, this last frame. You have eight frames in the animation, so it's repeating some. Oh, I have eight frames in the animation. I thought there was six in the original sketch. Am I losing track of numbers? Oh. So also, if you guys um, feel up to it, feel free if you guys are going to do like an entry for either, you know, one of my prompt lists or any prompt list, if you are planning on doing any little illustrations in the next week or so, tr feel free to try out the the um, the frame by frame tool on, on Fresco, you know, try not to be intimidated by it. I was a little intimidated. And honestly, I probably wouldn't even have thought to do it had you guys in chat not suggested it. Um, so I wanna thank you for that because it kind of like really opened my eyes to like try something new. Um, and it's been a lot of fun so far. I know that trying new tools can be really intimidating sometimes and it, it just kind of makes you just kind of procrastinate trying it, you know? Um, that's kind of how I felt when I first started using Fresco. Oh yeah, no, I have six. We got six frames for the flag sketch. Oh, but you know what? That's what it is. It's because, yeah, it's because there's eight frames for the cape. That's why it's getting thrown off. So we would need to add a couple more frames or just take off a couple of these frames from the cape. And now it should loop properly. There we go. Fixed it. <laughs> Aren't you worried about scratching your iPad screen with this pencil? Oh, no. Um, I, I don't have, I mean, some people have a screen protector, like those, um, um, paper, like they're the company is called paper, like, um, but that's mostly, I think, because some people don't really like the smoothness of, of, of drawing on the iPad screen. The paper, like has kind of like a paper texture to it. Um, but the, the iPad screens, the glass are meant for take, I mean, they're, they're meant for a much stronger, um, material to scratch it than the iPad pencil. Um, it, it's They wouldn't have made the iPad pencil to be used on the iPad screen if it was going to scratch it up. I mean, I, I press pretty hard on it and I've, I've never even come close to scratching it before. Okay, cool. So now we can go ahead and add in some cape, uh, color to the cape here, I think. Let's go ahead and make a new layer. And then we are going to, yeah, the first frame. And for these, we're actually not going to draw through. Um, for this, to kind of give it a little bit more of a traditional look, even though it's animated. I still kind of like that idea that it has a little bit more of a traditional look. So usually to achieve that or to help achieve that, 
I like to actually draw around other objects instead of drawing straight through. Like I can, I can draw straight through, straight over my sketch like that um, because we're working in layers, but I try not to because uh, drawing around my sketch like this kind of adds a, ni adds, um, a nice texture as well um, because it kind of forces me to draw in different directions and it gives it more of a traditional look as if I was painting on one layer or on a piece of paper. So we're just going to paint in the areas that are actually showing here. And we'll do that for each frame. However, that is about all the time we have for painting today. Um, we are going to go ahead and head over to look at community entries. Um, thank you all so much for watching so far. And I want to show off some of our amazing entries from our viewers. So let's hop on over to Power Prompts. Um, first, since we have this one open already, accidentally, this one is an incredible um, illustration. I think this person has done um, multiple draw this in your styles. I, I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure they did. Um, but they have at least done a few entries for uh, Medieval March already. And I just love all of these details. Oh my gosh, the and, and the, um, the shading, the wonderful, um, color gradients that they have, like the textured color gradients, like how these leaves go from like a warmish brown down to the cool green. Um, and just all of these different details, like this little apple pie and just uh, the tarot cards, the the little water bucket. Um, it's just everything screams medieval and I just love it so much. These shapes too, um, how they almost look like they're cut out of paper and then having the like, crayon texture over top of that is really is a really neat look um and then all this detail on this flag that's wrapping around is really cool love it um beautiful work um i love these colors too um this one as well is really super cute um this is a a really cool texture as well um it has kind of like a like a chalky texture it almost uh, has like a speckly look like concrete um, it kind of makes it look a little ancient, like medieval. I like that. Um, and they also did, um, uh, Marie, Marie Bird also did um, this turquoise color for her dragon as well. Um, so really love this pose, um, kind of mischievous look on the knight. Um, and the, the armor has some cute little filigree details as well. Really nice work. Oh, and this little smiley faces on the, on the stones. Very cute, love that. <laughs> Um, we have some entries for future prompts, but I'm, I'll, I'll go ahead and save those for our next prompts um, in the future. Um, but this one is from a, a, an artist named Crispy Art Boy. Um, this armor is so incredible. Uh, Crispy Art Boy, like I said earlier, actually um, um, sent in like three or four dragon uh, uh, finished dragon pieces. And this knight is just so incredible. Um, the, just even the detail in the sword shape is so unique. I really love like the, the double hand guards, the really long handle and just all of the different details in the, um, the armor, like it, there's so much to look at in this piece. And then the flat textures for the, for the dragon kind of in the background. It's really, really beautiful. Love it. Nice work, crispy art boy. Um, this was one of my favorites as well. Um, I really love the shapes in this one, um, the flat shapes, very, very, um, very dynamic, um, but also very simplistic. Um, they, they give a lot of information with a very simplistic silhouette. Um, and I love the, the exaggerated, um, look of like the big feather and the, the very like short sword kind of cartoony, uh, cartoony sword. Um, the very sharp angles for the the helmet um, and a very like very big cape that kind of envelops the the knight and then he's also the, uh, got his little his little uh, castle silhouette behind him as well and then striped pants are always a plus as too <laughs> love it 
Very nice. <clears throat> and then we also have some other dragons. Oh, wait, here, here's another knight as well. Um, Guerrero Illustration, S. Guerrero Illustration has done, I think, every prompt already. Um, and this knight is also a really nice touch. I love the, um, the spear and the crown. Um, really, really beautiful. And then the filigree around as well. It kind of made it look like it's um, vintage, vintage paper. It's really beautiful. Lovely work. And again, as always, you guys, if you would like to check out these entries, feel free to check out the hashtag Adobe Live Power Prompts, and you can upload your work with that hashtag as well, and we can check them out in our future streams. But uh, yeah, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. That was really fun to kind of go through the animation. Sorry for all of the hiccups that I experienced this stream. Maybe if we do some animation in the future, I will get more smooth at that. Um, but ho I hope you all um, feel like you can uh, tackle this week and uh, I will see you guys next week. I'm going to get cut off, so I'm going to head out. Bye. <laughs>